Hello, everyone. Welcome to our live chat with Angie Hallier, author of The Wiser Divorce, Positive Strategies for Your Next Best Life. Angie, thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to have you here. Thank you. So happy to be here. Um, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit more about Angie. Um, she is the founder and managing partner of Hallier and Lawrence, PLC. Uh, they're ranked the number one family law firm in Arizona by Ranking Arizona. Um, her practice includes complex divorce and legal separation, uh, business issues, incident to divorce, spousal maintenance, appellate work, and paternity issues. Um, and before we begin, I wanted to let all of our viewers know that um, you should stop by booktrip.com after the live chat. We are um, going to be giving away copies of The Wiser Divorce, so please uh, come by and enter to win. Um, and Angie, before we start the questions, can you tell us more about yourself um, and your new book, The Wiser Divorce? Okay, yes. Well, I have been a practicing family law divorce attorney for almost 25 years. Um, I am divorced myself. I have a great second husband, but the first one wasn't so great. So I have some personal knowledge about this too. But at that time, I hadn't even gone to law school. So I did, and now I do family law work. And in all my years of doing this, I've really seen how divorces can go surprisingly right and how they can go horribly wrong and what strategies there are for making it go right and getting to your next best life. So that's why I wrote the book. Fantastic. So speaking of strategies, we have a question from Camille, um, and she'd like to know, uh, what are some realistic strategies uh, for someone dealing with a divorce? Right. So you really want to strategize not just what you say, but how you think and monitor your emotions and how you act. That goes as far as working with your attorney, dealing with your soon-to-be ex, dealing with family and friends and your children. So one of the biggest strategies, and is hard, but you can do it, is to try to separate the emotions of your divorce from the process of your divorce. And we all know that that can be very difficult, but you know, ending a marriage is really just like ending a business relationship when you take it down to its core. And if you can really mm -hmm. implement those strategies to walk through this a little more gracefully, you will get to the other side, your next best life, having spent a lot less money, um, a lot less emotional trauma, and keeping your children whole. Excellent answer. Uh, Shauna has a question, um, and this was one of my favorite parts of the book. I thought it was just really well put. Um, she says, can you discuss your concept of leaving all the facets of your divorce and putting them into different rooms? So you put your emotions here, the money troubles here. Can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Yes, that's one of the strategies the book talks about. Um, so you think of your divorce as a series of rooms, and there's one room, and that's where you deal with your attorney and the divorce. Um, and that's where you process the divorce. You have to divide the assets and debts. You have to come up with strategies for your children. And when you're in that room processing the work of a divorce, you want to leave your emotions and anger and revenge in another room of the house. Because that's, you can go into that room, you can deal with those issues in that room, but don't break down the walls between the room. Keep those separate. Have another room where you deal with your children, where you're going to make sure they have a positive experience through this and a love and love for both parents. So again, don't break down the walls. And I find that that helps people really uh, keep those emotions in check and not bring that baggage into the legal process. Very well said. Um, Tina wants to know, what do you think is the number one reason um, slash cause for divorce? Well, to be a little <laughs> because people marry the wrong person, but, <laughs> but yeah. overall, you know what I think that what, what I've seen is keeping a marriage together on a really long-term basis is a lot of work and a lot of luck. Because especially for people that marry younger, you know, we change over the years. We grow in certain ways. Um, our personalities may change as we have children or we get a new job and career. And so, you know, those people that really work to keep what brought them together, the core of who they are, um, in sync with each other, I think have the better chance. But sometimes, you know what, people just change and it doesn't mean one person's bad and one person's good. Sometimes it's just time to evolve to the next part of your life. Absolutely. Um, Kelly wants to know, uh, what are some deciding factors when you are thinking about possibly divorcing your spouse? 
Right. Well, I certainly don't want to pay, play God in anyone's life. But, you know, if you are married to an active abuser, um, you know, emotionally or physically abusive person, you know, it, it, that's really hard for the other person to get over. I've done a lot of work in domestic violence arenas, and it really takes a lot of dedication on the part of the abuser to change. So that's one time. If that's not going to change, you have to leave. If you have a alcoholic spouse or a drug addicted spouse who doesn't want to get help, that's another sign to leave. And sometimes it's just you've tried all the therapy and coaching you can and it just doesn't work. Those are some of the reasons I see people actually go through with their divorce. Um, speaking of uh, an abusive uh, spouse, Frank wants to know, have you ever had a client that reconciled with um, his or her abusive husband? And if so, uh, how did you feel about it? And if not, um, how would you feel if that had happened? Right, so I have indeed had spouses who have been abused and partway through the process, they decide not to go forward. Sometimes it's wow. because they, you know, on the studies show that an abused spouse tries to leave or takes steps to leave seven times before they actually make the break. So sometimes it's because that power of the abuser is just so significant that they can't make that break themselves and get their freedom. And you know what, sometimes it's because, and this just happened recently in a case I had, the abuser, when once the, the wife in this case filed for divorce, he all of a sudden realized how his behaviors and actions had impacted his family, and he really wanted to change. And in those cases then, that, that's great. That's what we want. We want to break the cycle. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Shauna wants to know, what is the best way to deal with an abusive soon-to-be ex when you are going to court? Right. So one of the things, if you can afford an attorney, it's very important to have an attorney who understands the nuances of abuse. Because abusers oftentimes use the legal process through the divorce to further their abuse, okay? So they file pleadings that are full of hate. They make accusations that aren't real. They threaten you that bad things will happen if you don't cave into them. So number one, you want a, a divorce attorney who knows how to navigate that with you. Um, and then if you're gonna go to court and there's children involved, you probably want an expert who can talk about the impact on children of that kind of personality and that kind of abuser. And at some point then you want to work on yourself as well to make yourself stronger because if you've been in a battered relationship, you know, they make you feel so small and so, uh, you know, out of, out of power and you want to get that power back and find in the people and surround yourself with the people during your divorce who can help you find that power. Excellent. Um, Jennifer brings up a really important part of the book on um, keeping your children, you know, keeping them first. Um, and she'd like to know some su suggestions um, for keeping children happy and safe during this turmoil. Right. Well, I mean, that is the number one priority for people if you have children. And I do have people say to me so often, my children are my number one priority, but yet they do things in their divorce out of their own anger or fear. Um, that shows that they're really not putting them first. So people that really put their children first are the ones that talk to them together with their soon-to-be ex, that present a happy front, that assure them they will still have a family, it will just look different. They don't badmouth the other parent because that's really like directly attacking your child. They don't let other people speak poorly of the other parent in front of the child. They don't tell the child they don't have money to do things because the other spouse hasn't paid them. They don't cry when they leave. I mean, there's a lot more, but all of those things send a signal to your children that something's wrong instead of reassuring them that everything will be right. Mm -hmm. um, Caitlin wanted to know, what makes a great client? So the best clients are the ones that, that listen <laughs> to what us attorneys have yeah. to say. Because it's so hard Absolutely. when you're going through the divorce to realize what it means to get to the end and what it would really mean to go to court and how what you do at the beginning of your case could impact the outcome, your future life, how a judge views you. And so that is why you hire attorneys. So many times people hire us and they say they want to listen to us and then they do the opposite of what we say. So listen to your attorney. That's a great client. Um, good clients read their bills. 
they make sure they're up to date, right? Um, and they're invested. They get invested in their divorce. They see you as a strategic ally instead of someone who's just going to sprinkle fairy dust all over their problems and, and make it better. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a great client, <laughs> an easy client to deal with, which might not happen so often, I'm sure. Um, so Tina wants to know, can you talk a little bit about Angie's Angels and how that came about and what you do? Okay, so Angie's Angels is a group of volunteers made up of the 18 people that work here at the firm. And we started like eight years ago, and twice a year the firm closes down for a whole day, and the entire workforce goes into our community um, and does something to benefit others. And it's been a great, um, a great experience for everyone. We you, we go wherever the leader decides to take us. So every six months, there's two leaders for that day, and they pick anything in the community that they want us to do, and we all go do it for the day. And we've helped a lot of people, and also been able to see a lot of. Um, the work that's done in the community to help others that we wouldn't have otherwise known about. Fantastic. Um, Camille has a couple uh, interesting questions, actually. Uh, she has two here. She says, uh, what initially prompted you to pursue a career in family law? Oh, okay. I thought you were going to ask both at the same time. Okay, so what did I? Why? So, you know what? I was a single mom very young. Uh, my first husband was not anyone I would recommend anybody be married to, um, and so I hadn't did not have a college degree. I hadn't gone to law school. I had a two-year-old daughter and no really good way to support myself. So um, my dream of being a ballerina seemed like that wasn't going to work out anyway well anymore. So I went to law school um, and just thought, wow, this is something I can do. My daughter can be proud and I can help other people. So that's kind of what inspired me to do that. That's amazing. Um, Camille also says, uh, what do you think is the biggest misconception about divorce? Mm -hmm. You know what? I think divorce gets a really bad rap when it doesn't have to. So I think the yeah. biggest misconception about divorce is that this is going to either ruin your life, it's going to define the rest of your life, and that this, this is a very horrible, horrible thing. Because the reality is almost everybody I work with looks different, they look better, they're happier when it all comes to an end. Because the truth is, if one person in this relationship doesn't want to be married anymore, even if it's not you, you weren't probably getting what you needed in life or out of the marriage to begin with. So I think the misconception is that somehow this is the worst thing that could happen instead of looking at it as a gateway to really be happy and be your authentic self and live the life you want to live. Interesting. Um, Gwen has a question. Um, she says, you have a lot of great advice in the book for um, divorcing parents with young children. Um, and she wants to know, what are your thoughts on older couples who want to divorce and whose children have kind of already left home and, it, and they might feel like it's maybe too late, you know, to, to start over again? Oh, you mean start over in a new life? Um, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Some older, yeah. Right. So you know what? It isn't. I mean, I tell a story in the book, and it's one of my favorite stories about, you know, a woman whose children were grown, um, and she had been the stay-at-home. Her husband had a stellar career. She was just always going to be the one who made the roast and, and made the house great and planned for them. This was her role, and she loved that role in life, and she was devastated when her husband said, this is over. And you know, she didn't have kids to take care of anymore. And she actually like found this passion inside of her, a dream she always had, she never thought she'd realize um, to be a potter. And so she went from sobbing her way through the first five appointments we had, to going back to school, to creating lovely art, starting to support herself through the sale of her art, um, and you know what? Her whole life is, is great and wonderful now. So you know what? It doesn't matter if you're 20 and getting divorced or 70 and getting divorced. You can probably find things that you would love to do. And there's actually, you know, uh, appendixes worksheets in the back of the book and that you can download on the book website for free that help you 
kind of figure out what you want those dreams to be. What was it in your marriage that was good and you want to carry forward? What things are you going to lose and forget about? And what was something or what are the things that you always wanted to do or you've missed out on doing while your marriage that getting divorced can allow you to do? Excellent. Um, Dana wants to know, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received, uh, whether it has to do with writing or how to practice family law? Hmm. Well, someone told me, this is going to be a joke. Someone told me once that Hemingway said when I was writing this that you have to uh, write drunk and edit sober, but I didn't do that. <laughs> I thought it was good advice. No, um, you know That's what, in, li <laughs> in life I would say, never settle. Those are always the words that, that stick with me. You know, don't settle for a life that's less than you want it to be. Don't settle for a career that's less than you want it to be. Don't settle for a divorce that for your kids is less than you want to be. So I, I like the words don't settle. Mm -hmm. Fantastic advice. Um, Kenneth wants to know, um, what are the top three things people fight over during a divorce? Right, so, you know, it usually comes down to two, money and kids. But mm -hmm. what people really fight about, usually, if they're not being strategic and if they're not being wise, are things that have nothing to do with the divorce. They attach meaning from the marriage because of their anger uh, or being upset or feeling crushed. They attach meaning to things that don't really, you know, have to do with the divorce that much. It might be that you want extra money for a car because your husband said he'd always go buy you a new car over the last year and he was really out with his new girlfriend. So maybe you want $10,000 yeah. what you know, or a car. You really don't want the car. You want some payback, you know, for what he did. So one of the jobs is when we're dealing with, which is basically the money and the kids, that's what the divorce is, is it as at its core, um, you want to be careful about attaching meaning to objects that really aren't there. Um, Kelly wants to know, do you have any book events or upcoming seminars? I don't right now, but I believe that we're working on those. I certainly um, have some interviews that have been being done around the country that are um, on the website. And so, yes, we're going to work on those and get those scheduled. Yeah, let us know um, on your Twitter account, too, at Angie Holly, eh? So, yeah, absolutely. Um, Kyle has an interesting question about um, gender. He says, are the majority of your clients women seeking counsel, or do you have men coming to you as well in uh, sticky situations? Yeah, you know, it ebbs and flows. Right this minute, I have a more women than men, which I think is a result of a case I handled last year that got a lot of publicity for a woman, so then all the women came. But in my firm as a whole, um, we have seven attorneys here, and we are pretty evenly split between representing men and representing women, even though most of the attorneys here are women. So we, we do both, you know. We, we try to help everybody, and a lot of men really prefer to have a female divorce attorney um, for a number of reasons. I guess some people say because it doesn't feel like there's two men kind of beating up on, on the woman. Other of them think we can help them get inside the emotions and mind of their soon-to-be ex a little better and help them settle that way. So, yeah, usually about 50-50. Yeah, that's nice to know. Um, Mike has a question about um, a state law. Uh, he says, many states have no-fault divorce. Uh, do you see this as a good thing or a bad thing? No, I think no-fault divorce is a good thing. I mean, it means that you don't have to prove wrongdoing on the part of the other spouse to get a divorce. You are entitled to get a divorce if one person in the marriage wants a divorce, and that's very good. Um, it would be so costly especially in the world today, to not only have to divide assets and debts and get maintenance and child support and figure out the kids, but if you also had to go through the entire scenario of proving why one of the people was bad, that would be, you know, very expensive. And you know what? It's people move on. 
You don't have to have to, there, it doesn't have to be a bad person. And that's one of the truths I like people to see about divorce is you can have two really great people who just shouldn't be married anymore. Mm -hmm. No more blame game. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's always good to avoid. Frank has a question um, about the current Ray Rice um, media frenzy. Um, he says, how do you think it should, should have been, should, should not have been handled in the media, um, you know, by his wife, um, uh, basically, and the NFL? Right. Well, you know what? You have to respect her decisions as her decisions. But from my right. perspective, there is a significant issue there. I mean, when you watch that video, you know, whatever she did, yeah. I think they say she spit on him, whatever she did, I mean, it, she did not deserve mm -hmm. what he did. And then the initial no. kind of cover up wasn't wasn't great. So, you know, I, I don't want to judge what the NFL did, but I would say that domestic violence is a serious problem. It should be taken serious by everyone. And I really hope that within their marriage, because now they're married, he is addressing whatever issues he had that caused him to act out that way. Um, so, yeah, gay marriage is being legalized in a lot of places, and we have a question about that. Um, Oops. I'm missing you. You're gone. There we go. We're back. Hi there. <laughs> Can you hear me? Hi. Are you there? I'm looking at something. Oh, hi. I was trying to find you again. <laughs> Hang on. I can't hear her. Um... I can hear her. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Huh. Can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you. Have I been muted? No. I can hear you. Okay. You want? I have somebody coming to help. Mm -hmm. no. What is it? They can't hear me again. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Hi, Angie. Hi. So technical difficulties. Yep. We will get it working. They can hear me. But you cannot hear them. No, I mean they cannot hear me. I can hear them. So it's like I don't know if it's my mic. Where's the mic? Huh. I hear you both on the other end though. Interesting. I saw it says up. Can you hear me now? Push that one. Can you 
you're able to hear us and I'm able to hear you on the live broadcast, so. Can you hear me now? Try the other one. Sure. Because remember before they couldn't hear me and we had something over there. Okay, nothing. Do you think she could hear me? No, right? She can hear you. I can hear you. She can. She can, can hear and you. Can hear you. Just remove this. Okay. Can you hear me now? No. Can you hear me? What should we do? I can hear you. How did that happen? Just like it didn't touch anything. No, it went back. It like disconnected. So go back over there. Well, that's your speaker. That's okay. You hear them. That's, that's your the microphone, microphone. And, and it it's says going, it's working. Like, uh. Um, okay, Angie, so I'm going to go ahead and ask the question. Um, I'm having trouble hearing you, but I'm going to put it through. Um, so the last thing we talked about was, have you ever come across a gay couple who needed counsel um, or who were looking to divorce? And the question's right above the screen. Um, yes, yes, um, I have, although gay marriage is not legal. Um, in Arizona. So we don't do divorces in Arizona for gay couples, but certainly issues come up around adopted children or um, with lesbian couples, one of the parties having a child and those issues, or even cohabitation issues or buying buying houses together. They're treated a little differently under the law than, than a married couple would be divorcing, but yes, we do deal with those. Okay, um, so Let's see, for our next question, uh, Shauna says, um, oh, I'm sure, I'm sorry, Frank says, you frequently speak at legal education seminars and public events. Um, she wants to know, what is the most common question you get when the floor is open? Oh, gosh. Um, I don't know if there's a common question. I pe People want to know a lot about things that happened to their friends, to their family. People ask a lot about having equal parenting time with children when children are young, how the courts calculate child support, how the cal uh, courts calculate spousal maintenance, you know, very specific things because almost everybody either has gone through this or knows someone who's gone through it or is related to someone who's gone through this. Okay. okay. Um, Kenneth wants to know, what are some activities you would recommend for clients uh, to remain calm and not be vengeful during this divorce process? Right. Well, you know what? You have to prepare like you're preparing for a uh, as a professional athlete. You need to think and strategize. Who will I surround myself with? What are my goals going to be? How will I mentally prepare for this? And what is my vision for success? And once you do that and start to break it down into those categories, you can really come up with strategies that help you get to your next best life. Um, Jennifer wants to know, what's the best direction to go for custody if you can't agree on it? Right. Well, you know, you have to take into account uh, the age of the children, the personalities of the children, any specific needs of a child, like if the child is autistic or something. And there's not one size fits all. It's really about what's best for this child or these children. You look at how much each parent has been involved, how much time each parent has to give them. But overall, all of the studies show that children who experience uh, frequent contact with both parents and have meaningful relationships with both parents, even if those relationships look a little different from a mom and a dad or two moms and two dads, those are the children that do best in life. Um, Dana wants to know a little bit about you and what you do in your spare time. Um, she says you're so busy with the practice and writing your, uh, the book. Um, how do you find time for yourself and what do you do in your spare time? Yeah, I don't find a lot of time, but when I do have time, I love to read. I like to work out. I like to do outdoor things and go places that are cooler than the desert of Arizona so that you can kayak, <laughs> take hikes in the woods. I love doing that and I like really good food and wine. Um, Ellen uh, says you served on committees that oversee family law certification and she wants to know what was that process like? Yeah, you know what, it is a, um, 
the process is interesting because, you know, all of us as attorneys do the best we can at any given time. Um, so I enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed being able to certify people that we could say to the world at large, this is someone that we believe has the right qualifications to be a very good divorce attorney for you. Um, so I, I really enjoyed being able to do that and support other professionals who have similar outlooks about how divorce should go forward. Great answer. Um, Kelly wants to know, how important is it for separating spouses to remain civilized and come out of the divorce in a healthier manner? Right. Well, I mean, that's that's the point of the whole book. And it's really important because really how you again, you are going to have this next great part of your life. It can be one of the best parts of your life, but it really hinges on how you walk through this process of ending your marriage and what how you think, how, what you say, how you act, how much money you spend. How, how you interact with friends and family. I mean, are you going to line people up on one side and try to get people to hate the other person? I mean, it's really about what you put out. And when you start putting all that negativity out, you don't get as whole to the next part of your life. Great. Um, Kyle wants to know, are you working on any other future books? Well, I have some in mind. So not yet. But um, I would love to write a book for attorneys that really helps attorneys implement the wiser divorce in all of the divorces they do. Great, great. Um, so we've kind of covered all of the topics here in the questions. Um, and I just wanted to thank you again for coming today. And I wanted to remind everyone to stop by Book Trib after the live chat and uh, enter to win a copy of The Wiser Divorce. Um, and just thank you so much, Angie, for coming to speak to us today. We learned so much talking with you. Hey, thanks so much, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.